Hi, I'm Marcel James, and today I'm going to break down my vocal plugin chain. Now, what brought this about is I posted several uh, videos of the different models of the Sphere L22 microphone from Townsend Labs, which has now just been purchased by UA. I have a large review coming of this microphone, but I'm waiting for some updated information from UA about where the direction is going now with the microphone. So I'm looking forward to getting that posted as well. But in one of the individual videos, the YouTube shorts that I posted, somebody asked me how I'm doing, what my vocal chain is. Could I share my vocal chain? And because I'm just using an interface mic preamp and he's using an interface mic preamp, I don't think there's going to be any big difference there. I decided to go ahead and break down the plugins that I use and the way that I work with vocals inside my DAW. So I'm using Logic, but all of these plugins are third-party plugins so they can work with any DAW. Um, there are links to all of them, including the L22. Uh, there are affiliate links with Sweetwater. That's a new development for me. I'm now an affiliate with Sweetwater. So you can buy those through those links in the description, any of these things that I'm discussing. And um, you'll be supporting this channel in the process. So that's much appreciated. So the first thing in the chain, well, before I get to the chain, let me just say, I am recording uh, triple vocals. So I have uh, a lead vocal and then I have two I'll play you the, the track here, basically, but there's two vocals sort of supporting it and then panned a little bit to the left and the right. But when they're all together, it creates an illusion of a single lead vocal that's just big, I guess. Um, and so listen to a clip here. There's a thundering sound in the world that makes it through. So there's a synth pop ballad I'm working on uh, for a project of mine called Profits on TV. Um, I've got several releases out and the recent ones all used the L22, but I wasn't using the modeling. So for this one, I started using a couple things I wasn't using before. First of all, the actual modeling in the plugin. And I really like the U67 model on this track. So I'll play it with you. I'll play you the lead vocal right now without the 67. Well, let me just play the vocal stem so you'll hear it all and see what kind of happens. Um, this is the vocal stem with this turned off. There's a button here on the right that'll just, it'll keep the plugin on because it's recorded to two tracks. You, you, know, you wanna use the plugin, but it turns off the modeling part, this button on the right here. So this is without the modeling on the lead vocal. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. Now I'll turn it on and you'll hear what the 67 is bringing to the party. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. As you would expect, darker kind of smoother, which works on this kind of a ballad. The other thing that I'm doing in this plugin is new to version 1.5, and that's the isosphere. Because I have a isolation uh, booth area or a little box area that I made with acoustic panels, um, it, this works really well to define uh, the sound of the voice. And this alone can be making a big difference if you're not using isosphere, even in a room sometimes that isn't treated particularly well. This is going to help define that voice. So let me just solo now just that lead vocal and I'll turn off the isosphere to give you an idea what that's doing. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. Now I'll turn on Isosphere and listen to that lead vocal again. 
There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So a whole lot more specific, a whole lot more, you know, clear and just focused on the vocal parts that matter and just sounds better to me. So yeah, if you if you have an isolation kind of sort of area in your room, and just or not experiment with uh, with the isosphere because you can get some really great results. So that's the first part of the quote unquote chain. The second part is um, a deesser. Now I've used all kinds of plug-in deessers, and I always miss the old DBX hardware deesser from back in the day when I made this kind of music uh, when I first started making synth pop back in the synth pop era. Um, this is the first one to me that really gets it done in a very specific on off sort of manner. S, turn the turn turn it down, you know. S not playing, it's not doing anything. I'm going to put the output only again uh soloing this and you'll hear what S is it's it's cutting. And I'm using classic mode as a, as opposed to the more intelligent spectral mode, which I find gets a little more interesting and finicky. Uh, but not as specific. I really like this specific job this does. And I'll tell you why in a second here. But so listen to how it, the S's that it's actually removing. You're just going to hear those S sounds that it's suppressing. So you hear that it works just on those S's. And then if you notice, I have it again on the bus itself. So I do a bit here and a bit there, and the end result is not heavy handed. It's very smooth and uh, works really well. So I'm just going to turn off the one on the lead and go back to the, go back to the, uh, yeah, let's go to the, the whole stack again, the whole vocal bus and just see what this one effect on the lead vocal is doing to those S's. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So this is just half of what we're actually DSing because again, I have I'm using two of them. So let's turn that on now. Listen. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So you'll notice you still hear the S's. They're not gone. They're not wiped out. They're not nuked, right? But they're there, which, you know, I you don't want to remove them. That's but they're there. I want people to hear them. But they're definitely brought down in, in a nice orderly way. Um, and I think it, it sounds very much like hardware to me. So I really am happy with the RX. Now, that comes only in a couple different bundles by Isotope. Uh, that l I'll put a link for a couple of those options uh, down in the description where you can get those. The third thing in the chain is the H comp compressor. The, their Waves has stuff that's either good, great, or amazing. This is in the amazing camp. This is an, an outstanding compressor. Again, acts and sounds like hardware to me. Um, but I love that it has the zero mode. Now I'm just using it in sort of a solid state manner, but you could definitely, there are different tube or warming output transformer uh, methods here that you can turn this up and uh, on this knob here. And uh, the further you go, the more colored it gets. But on the channels, I tend not to go for color. I go for color on the bus more. Um, so I have it set to nothing, but uh, instead of turning up my fader, I'm turning up the output here and it just sort of lifts the vocal up out of it. So again, listen to the chain with the three vocals. They sound like three vocals, really. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. That's without the H comp. Now with the H comp on that lead, the one that's louder and in the middle. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So it pulled up that center vocal just enough to make it sound dominant. Um, again, uh, why that works. Now, I'm not, I'm, I'm working in a fast sort of manner. Um, I also, and I haven't done that here, I also go in and word for word and do volume automation on the vocal. 
it's not something that's going to change the demo for the chain part of it. So, I, but I think it's important to also keep in mind that I would then pull that threshold down a bit when I'm done. So the compressor is doing less and I'm actually drawing it in. But at the end of the day, they're both going to work. Um, it's just going to sound a bit smoother if I pull down certain words with volume automation. Just a, just a side note there. Um, the next thing in the chain is just a simple high pass filter. Um, the thing that's key about this is that I have this, I'm using the fab filter, which sounds better than the stock ones in the DAW. Logic EQ is very good. This just sounds a little more elegant to me. Um, but I'm, I'm using a gentle slope. So there's low end, there's bass coming in with the vocal. And a lot of people just lop everything off. They go up to 2, 300, 250, something like that. Everything that isn't sub or kick drum or bass, they, they cut all the lows out. And I, don't, I think that the tonality of your mix is defined by your lead vocal. And if you have a thin sounding vocal, you're going to have a thin sounding mix. So I like to leave some low in. Now it's going to get further shaped in a minute. I'll show you. Um, but I like to leave some of that low end stuff so I, I do this gradually, and to me, it sounds like the vocal has more body in the end of, at the end. Um, so that's quite simple. Um, now, I have a couple uh, effects sends on the channels, and all three of the channels are, are very similar, by the way. They're pretty much the same with a few minor settings. So this is a reverb. So let's go, uh, we'll play the whole thing again. Um, the reverb with the, we'll turn the reverb off for a moment. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. Now I'll turn the reverb on. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So it does a really good job of taking away, smoothing everything out, taking away the choppiness of a vocal, especially for a ballad, an 80s style ballad. You just want it sort of steady energy. This does a really good job of that. Native instruments effects, for, you know, the instruments, everyone knows them. Everyone thinks of native instruments because it's in their name. They think of the instruments. Their effects are really, really good. And this reverb is no exception. So the other one that I use that I absolutely love is the, the uh, Replica XT. The Replica is also very good. The Replica XT adds a bit of functionality. Uh, these, these delays, the way they decay, I, would used, I used to have to automate the decay on my delays if you can imagine how much work that was. Um, so I don't have to do that really anymore, especially, well, I have, I'm using two of these. So I'm using quarter note ones. I'll turn those off right now and you'll see what, what's going on with that. Uh, excuse me, 16th notes. So it's like a, a, an, a, an echo. So it's a 16th notes on this one. And listen again to the stem without this turned on. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. Now that delay you hear come in on that makes it through is a half step uh, um, that's on the whole bus that's automated for certain words. But this 16th note one just plays, it rings the whole time and adds uh, some character to the whole voice and thickens it all up. Listen to this with it. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So again, the decay on both of those delays is just so musical and so nice. Works so well in a mix right away that I, this is a must-have. Again, comes in bundles, so you're going to want to make sure you have the the um, native instrument bundle that that includes these effects. Um, now. I hear more than just delay going on. It actually adds a bit of harm, harmonizing, kind of a harmonic effect to the vocal, which is which is really cool and and very 80s again for this track. So that is a cool tool. Um, so more than just the chain. Now you've got triple vocals. You've got these different effects here, uh, DS or compressor, EQ. You know all the the usual suspects, right? You've got some stuff that I'm doing on the Townsend Labs itself. Then if you go to the bus, 
we got some more stuff. And on the bus, the first, now we get into more of the contouring of the, of the tonality of the sound. And the first thing that I have on all of the vocals is a pig tech. Now, these are the bus. Pig tech is, to me, the best sounding pull tech uh, plugin. It is, it, a lot of them, pull techs themselves can get muddy in the low end. And what you're doing is boosting and cutting low frequencies. That's the big key to this and also boosting and cutting upper mid frequencies. And that's kind of the trick of this pull tech on, on vocals and in, and in general. And if you remember when I talked about the bass leaving some of that low end for the vocal, this helps to contour that low end when I, when I talked about earlier. So if I turn this off, listen to it without the pig tech on the bus, the vocal bus. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So it's clean, a little too clean, and you do hear low end on the bottom, but it's not really shaped in a way that glues everything together. So listen to it now. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. So where you may have cut that low end more, if you didn't have the big tech on there, um, now you understand why it's there because it glues that whole vocal. It, it, it adds body to the vocal. It goes from just being maybe bass I would cut because it's not really connected to the vocal itself to actually being a part of the vocal. That is why these two things, and that's why in general, something you do early in the chain is going to be impacted by something you do later in the chain. If you're looking at them on their own, it doesn't give you the complete picture. Um, these two tools work together very well, leaving some low end in and then contouring it with the Pultec EQ. Then we've got that second de I told you about. Um, trying not to do something like de can be very heavy handed if you did it all with one. So spreading the load is really useful. Um, then the last thing in the vocal chain is also very important to the sound. It's uh, by Native Instruments, but they license this soft tube uh, LA-2A. And um, I love it. I just, as a character piece, I'll play you the stem without it. it sounds good, but it really can, it really glues really well everything together and, and gives it a nice vibe when it's turned on. So this is without the LA-2A model. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. You can definitely tell that everything's a bit jagged, a little bit more jagged. You know, one vocal that might have been recorded slightly hotter than the other, on a, or, I, or I accentuated one word within that phrase on one track more than the other, and that's what I mean by jagged. Whereas when it's on, when this with this VC2A or LA2A model is on, listen to how it contains all of that into one vocal. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through. I mean, that to me is magic. And of course you want it on the end because that's the last thing you want to do is, is to glue, right? So now again, we listen to the whole track with all that context and listen to how it really still all sounds, even though I showed you all of that that's going on, delays, multiplying vocals, all the effects. Listen to how it still sort of sounds like one voice and you can hear the words. If it was sloppy, the words would start getting, the lyrics would start getting smeared. But to me, it doesn't. It's very clear. There's a thunder and sound in the world that makes it through.
So there's the whole cut, the whole clip that I worked on for this video. And I hope that helps kind of demystify and, you know, what sometimes you think when you're listening to a track, a song, and you just hear one voice leading the whole thing. Um, that's, you know, usually not the case. There's something else going on to support that thing, thicken that thing and make it rise above the music bed that's going on around it. Um, if I, if I just took out all those tools and all that doubling and all that delay, you would, it would, it would be thin and it would sound questionable, you know, and not as big and impactful. So, uh, do check out those uh, affiliate links for Sweetwater. I hope you guys uh, pick up some of these. There's some great deals. Those waves are really affordable, those two waves ones. And then there's some bundles for the others. Um, I know that um, these are uh, these tools, you know, if you've already got the UA, for example, you, know, you can use those pull techs. They're very good in the UA bundle. So don't feel like you have to go out and get the Puig tech and expect, you know, huge differences. I like this one better. I think it's worth a little extra money. But yeah, if you've got some of those other alternatives for the LA-2A, for example, or the Pultec EQ, for example, certainly get started with those right away and see where that brings you and then go from there. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.